You roll it? Oh, okay. Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> Hey guys, Justin from Homeart.io, and today we are at the Ann Arbor Distilling Company. Let's head inside and see what they're all about. Explain to us what, what kind of still you have here. So I well, see three different towers, three different setups. Yeah, we have a, it's a column still, and it's, yeah. instead of, you know, being about 30 feet in the air, it's broken into three large pieces and they're all connected by uh, the stainless steel tubing so it works just like a tall column still it allows us to do not only a one-step whiskey and bourbon but it also allows us to make vodka which is definitely a process you'd have to do distill multiple times if you didn't have a column still your grains from it's all michigan source it's uh, not only just michigan it's all from dexter michigan which is about 20 miles from here 20 minutes probably 10 miles by the crow um, three of the grains are grown by one farm called okay. Cares Farm, and then we had get barley that's grown about 15 miles south of here. Cool. So everything we do is super local, as local as possible. We call them on a Monday, they grind the grain on a Tuesday, deliver it to us on a Thursday. Awesome. So that's, it's a really fresh product and they, they don't grind it until we order it. Do you do like bourbon one day? Or and the Michigan whiskey another. Yeah, you know, another, usually like, I'll do a couple couple weeks of one product just to kind of get consistent with it. So like this week we're just at the end of doing two and a half or three weeks of bourbon. Then we're going into rye, okay. and we'll do a couple weeks of that, and then probably sneak in a Michigan whiskey since that's our most popular product. So your Michigan yeah. your Michigan whiskey, am I correct? It's four grains. Four grains. And do yeah. you, you charcoal filter it with uh, cherry? Cherry wood charcoal. Cherry wood charcoal. Yeah. So what uh, what was the decision on that? You know, this that was done before I was here. I mean, the 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 whole idea to make the Michigan whiskey is you know whiskey does not have to be in a new barrel like bourbon does. Right. So when you're doing bourbon and rye you have a lot of leftover barrels this allowed us to put reuse a barrel okay with the michigan whiskey and that was kind of the impetus for it brandon went on to tell us about how they try to source everything they can from the grain down of the barrels from local suppliers barrels can be tough to come by specifically from michigan so they sometimes source from other midwestern states including minnesota it's a small operation but ambitions are high as they experiment with new products and expand their spirits lineup Fernet that we just put that, in yeah, the, okay. that we just put in last, and I'm now working on a, you know, a, either a Cointreau or Grammaire style orange liqueur that we're doing right now to try to figure that out. Now so, we we were told uh, that there may be a hop whiskey. Yep. Uh, yeah. Chris is Chris is actually uh, been messing around with that. It's it's actually pretty good. Kind of has a tequila note to it. Oh, really? that sounds and, good. And yeah, which you yeah. can't do if you're doing all local Michigan stuff. We can't make tequila. So and it kind of has that tequila flavor or feel, I guess, as much as anything. And uh, and we're we're looking we're looking forward to doing that. Any future products only serve to strengthen their already impressive lineup of available spirits. This includes their Ann Arbor seasonal gins, wheat vodka, Fox River whiskeys, schnapps, liqueurs, and even an absinthe. It seemed to us that the team at Ann Arbor Distilling Company has a penchant for punching above their weight, but we decided to go straight to the source and ask the authority. This is Rob Cleveland. The distillery served as his brainchild. Everything from the founding of the distillery down to the Fox River name of the whiskey line is part of his own personal story. So you're sitting in this wonderful little space right here, uh, which I bought in 2009. Uh, you see all these great rafters, yeah. and it's just a, it's a beautiful space, but it didn't look like this when I first bought it. Uh, there was a drop ceiling in here. It was just kind of a janky space that I was renting out to some guy that was doing wiring harnesses. And one day I popped my head up through the drop ceiling, and I saw this just all this amazing woodwork and everything. And when he left, I took the drop ceiling down, cleaned it all up, and literally someone walked in and said, hey, this would make a great distillery. And that was kind of it. So, you know, if you're walking through here, you're gonna see that much smaller pot still that's in the little R&D room over there, right? That was it. That's all you were gonna do, just have that little pot still, 
do some things, sell it in the tasting room, and that was it. But I got things rolling, and you know, it was going along okay. And then there were four other guys, and a couple of them were, you know, pretty long-term friends. And they were like, "Wait a minute, you opened up a distillery, and you didn't talk to me." And uh, so I said, "Well, listen, guys, if you really want in, let's, uh, you know, let's talk." We put all the numbers together. They brought the capital in, and so now you got your 1,000 liter Carl yeah. still from Germany that is just a monster, and this really changed the whole shape of the, really the whole trajectory of the, the, the business plan, and what we wanted to do. So now uh, we have 21 different products over five brands. If you really dive into each of them, you see a little bit of a reasoning behind why we went, went and did that particular pack. The Fox River is a, a river up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Back uh, 25 years ago, uh, my friends and I started going up to the Fox River. And so this is a little bit of a personal homage to that trip that we've been going on for a long time. Um, but the whiskey specifically has got kind of an interest, interesting story behind it. So when you make bourbon, you're looking at uh, you know two years in a new American oak barrel, right? That's the that's the standard. And then when the barrel's done, well, you can't put bourbon back into it because it's got to be new. And we were looking at these barrels and we were thinking, you know, they're still really good. Not just for barreling other stuff. You know, we put our coffee liqueur in it. We put our uh, our fall gin in it. But the barrels still had a lot of life. And so we wanted to find a different way to use them. So we put together this particular uh, product, and you'll note that it says Michigan Whiskey on it. It's not just Fox River Whiskey. Well, this is a great story. We went to the TTB, and we said we want to have that. You know, we want it to be named Michigan Whiskey, and they said no. That's that's not a thing. Really, it is, right? Like it's actually made in Michigan, and it's actually whiskey. So, so they finally gave us approval. I think we're the only guys that are referring to our whiskey as Michigan whiskey. So. What's uh, what's next for Ann Arbor Distilling? So I think you're only Michigan right now, correct? That's right. Yeah. Any any plans to expand in the future? You know, absolutely. We'd love to get it into other states. I think the basically the format right now is do absolutely the best we can here in the state of Michigan. This is our home. This is where all of our product is sourced. We want to make sure we're really maximizing. Uh, where we sit here in the state of Michigan first. And this is not just, you know, some philosophical construct. You look at the big guys, you look at where they started. Yeah. You know, they made, they really made their foundation effective in their home state, in where they were localized, and then they moved out from there. So that's our first priority, but we're definitely looking at other states. We've got these different products because we want them to stand on their own. We don't want them to be you know, determined by someone's understanding of Ann Arbor, Michigan. But that's our home base. Michigan is our heritage, and we want to make sure we're maximizing our value here first before we take a look at going into other states. It's obvious that Rob and the crew take pride in being from Michigan, and it shows from their sourcing and product line. But being involved in the Ann Arbor community is equally as important. Located on the University of Michigan's campus, the distillery offers up floor space for a senior level chemical engineering class to conduct spirit making science experiments without having to set up in the backwoods. So they take a neutral grain spirit that's typically, at least here, made from corn, um, and then it's put in this still with the ingredients that we chose. And so we chose a combination of lime, a uh, couple different chiles, uh, sugar rush peeped pepper, some ginger, some coriander, and then the defining characteristic of a gin is juniper berries, so we've included those as well. And then it comes off into this bucket here, and we can taste both what's coming off at the time and like how that has a unique flavor, and then also how it combines in the bulk to have that flavor. Very cool. So is this is this a chemistry class or is it like distillery class? What is it? Uh, this is Chemical Engineering 497 and it's cool. called Distillation of Spirit. So we're all seniors in chemical engineering oh, at Michigan. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So uh, what is, so when is this supposed to be done? Like how long is the duration? Do you know? They say it's a couple hours. Kind of depends on like what your final product you're you looking for. You guys get to for. take it home? Yeah. Do you? Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Awesome. We'll do like a pre so this is a like super high proof right now. So then in a few weeks we'll have to proof it down to a drinkable 
proof, um, and then we'll also do a final presentation, a label design, and wow. a cocktail idea. After visiting Ann Arbor Distilling Company, the biggest thing that stands out is the culture stemming from the top down. This means taking the long road and doing things that aren't easy, such as the tough decision to not source their spirits and instead build everything from the ground up. It gives a level of authenticity that cannot be understated. The atmosphere in the shop is serious but playful and fun but focused. From Nate the distillery dog to the distillers Brandon and Chris, the bartending team, the management, and the owner Rob, there's a sense of pride, family, and the belief that they will continue to succeed by making spirits on their own terms. So if you're in town, maybe to watch the Wolverines at the big house or just to enjoy a day in Ann Arbor, make sure you take the time to stop by, say hello, grab a drink, and please be sure to give Nate a pat on the head for us. Thanks for watching. Cheers, friends.